Okay, we got uh, some more stuff going on here. It is Friday, the 11th of June, and I think the seal coating is new for you. This happened actually Wednesday late in the day, four or five o'clock. They snapped off all of the uh, ties from the forms along the wall. They're still there on the edge because they weren't snapping off clean. They were chipping out a lot of the, uh, the concrete. They're set kind of level to the concrete because of the, the way that we needed or where we needed the ledge to be situated. So uh, what we're doing there instead is I think after backfill we're just gonna grind them off and that will be the easiest cleanest way to do it I'm not sure if we'll be grinding them toward the back of that lip or right at the front edge like the others but either way that's what we're doing um, so they also snapped them off on the inside it looks like and we'll just go through and make sure that they're flush and clean on the inside I haven't been in since this all got sprayed, but let's see if we can get a closer look on the inside. They have been snapped off. I'll look down this wall. You can tell there, there are some sticking out just a little bit. I might spend some time this weekend and get them clean and flush on the inside as well. I've got a grinder that uh, will make a mess, but we'll just give us a, a flatter wall to work with, which is better for the foam board insulation that'll be going in. Um, I think we're about to get drainage tile and stone, all of that stone actually, filled in along the outside. I, don't, I thought that was gonna happen today, uh, or I guess maybe Monday, that's a possibility. Um, but that's the next thing that needs to happen. Inside and out, we need the drainage tile, um, which is just a PVC pipe, like a white pipe with holes in it. Um, it goes all along the perimeter, I think off of that back corner there, the family room. Uh, that'll probably be our low spot. We'll trench out to daylight. Um, so it'll be easy to, for everything to kind of drain if uh, if we ever got some high water. We haven't seen anything going on here. And it's rained a few times. Um, the brook is dry. Things are generally dry, so I don't think we would have seen anything. So still a good idea to be doing all of this. And the way the crazy weather has been working, you know, I, I strongly believe climate change is real and we don't know what exactly to expect in the future. So we're also on the side of a hill here and obviously water features kind of all around us. Uh, it's just a good idea to play it safe here. So um, we will. Anyway, we are, uh, once that all happens, we, we have a change of plans. Obviously the the coating here is different from what we had originally uh, been going with, which was a peel and stick membrane that was like four feet wide and would, would have gone from just where they've sprayed it here and wrapped down onto the footing. So essentially this coating is the same deal, except that that coating had an outer kind of plastic layer. Um, and we had thought about doing the a similar plastic layer that had a dimple kind of texture to it, which would have given a, an air gap and a, um, a nice protection from backfill. Um, it's made out of a similar product to like milk jugs. So it's, and, and it would have had about an inch of, or three quarters of an inch of, uh, of gap there between the wall. And so like when you're throwing rocks and things, at it, it would have protected the wall. So yesterday they started bringing the sand in. So we, what the compromise was, well, let's just fill it with 
really soft stuff. Let's make sure that it's sand and that there's nothing big. We were thinking about filling it with what came out, but everything's sharp and chunky and lots and lots of rocks, as you see, kind of strewn around everywhere. Um, and so the first couple of loads looked pretty clean and good, um, at least on top. But there are, you know, stones even in this that I was like, hmm, I think that'll be okay. They look rounded. And then we started getting loads like this. And, you know, I'm not, not as thrilled about that. I mean, some of these, like, could, could be really bad. It's really the same thing. You can kind of see across the way there. There's a whole bunch of stones in there that are not small. Um, and any one of them can compromise. You know, you hit the wrong spot on this wall. And it's not about the structure of the wall. The wall isn't going anywhere with a stone that size. Um, but it can scrape a patch of this coating off of the wall or thin it out enough to, you know, some of these big ones down the line could become uh, an issue. So we don't want that issue. Um, so they're going to have to find a way to screen it on site before it goes in. Um, that's the deal. <laughs> You know, if it's something as small as one of these drainage stones, you know, no big deal. If it's smaller than a baseball, really, even, no big deal. But, like, all of these are, or most of them, are bigger than that, and they are a deal. There's something. Something that I don't want around the perimeter touching um, this black tar, so. Anyway, we got to figure that out and figure out how to do that. One other thing that was going on, uh, while the guy was spraying, I was here unloading. Got a big delivery behind the stone there of that foam insulation. So that is the foam that's going to be going, uh, I think it's the same stuff that goes on the interior walls of the basement and the floor. So there's two layers of it on the floor um, and a single layer of it on the walls before the basement walls themselves go up. Uh, there's going to be stud wall around the whole perimeter of the basement and then traditional, um, I think, blown in insulation there. So we'll get the thermal break with that foam and then traditional insulation and everything. That's why it's so important that everything stays dry. Um, so that, that foam got delivered and the other thing that we decided we are, I figured out what the hole on the back of the house through the foundation was all about. And so what we're doing there is this is going to be a access to a dry well. So a number of the systems of the house, air conditioning, heating, um, we have an ERV, which is an ener energy recovery ventilator going in. And um, they all have condensation lines, kind of drip lines, slow flow, um, but they need to get rid of the water that they're collecting in the air and get rid of it somehow. And so this is going to be a drain location uh, for that. So that will come out into the backyard, just, I don't know, 10 or 15 feet out into the middle here, and just be a, a dry well pit. Um, again, very low flow. We're also gonna be connecting a sump pump to that location. Um, and our water system actually will be, um, it might be coming in there. I, we don't know exactly where we're gonna route the water system now. Um, originally it came in kind of the middle of this wall 
and we may still do it. I think we can probably get that condensation line out this way, but we have um, a water filter system that has to flush every, like basically once a week to make sure we're getting everything out of the, the well that we need out. And uh, so that had a separate drive or evacuation to daylight over by the culvert um, on this side of the driveway. But that culvert might be changing. We might widen the driveway to include and, and widen that culvert there. So um, I think it's best if it comes out here. We'll see what we can do about that, um, I guess, after the fact. We'll try to figure it out. Anyway, we'll get it drained out here, and this will be a dry well on this side. Back to my original thing. So the guy was spraying, and there was still a gap in here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that on camera, but there's a little piece. I think you can see it better on the other side. There was about a two, two and a half inch gap um, on this side. Yeah, you can see that. There's a little, little piece of something wedged under there, and that is actually a piece of foam that I had just from the barn when I was insulating in there this winter um, that I wedged in there before he got around to this side so that we had a continuous seal all the way around um, and got good coverage on everything so that there was no chance of water penetrating through any of this concrete. I don't think he was planning to spray the underside of this um, bulkhead uh, and he wasn't gonna be able to do anything with the, the gap there, which was supposed to be foam. I believe all that foam that I was talking about back there that is gonna be on the floor of the basement was supposed to be going under there as well and then there's concrete on top of all that foam so it would have been sealed up but it wouldn't have had this coating on it and it would have been a weak point so I quickly jammed something under there so he could spray and keep it all continuous throughout um, what else I think that's about it so we're ready for the pipe and the stone to get put in I thought the guy was supposed to be here this week um, maybe he'll drop by this afternoon to clean this all up. At this point, I kind of hope not. He's probably pissed at me for complaining uh, uh, that there's all these rocks in this sand, but you know what? It's my house, and I don't want it to get screwed up before we're even done building it, so we're going to play it safe here. Um, you know? If he doesn't like it, he can buy me the geo mat and we can glue it up there <laughs> before it gets uh, gets backfilled. That would made made me happy too. So it's up to him how he wants to deal with this all. So I think we'll just get a screener here. We'll get it screened and have uh, have good clean stuff go in the hole. All right, I guess we'll, uh, we'll try to get in this weekend, clean up on the inside, and get some more of these big stones out of here. More of this stuff fell in as they were working, especially down this way here, so we'll get it cleaned back out and uh, ready for next week. All right, see you next time. Have a good weekend.